Hi, peeps. Susanna here today for Thermal Web, and I am sharing with you a 4th of July layout, COVID style, created using some of the new goodies from Laura Kelly Thermal Web. So we are actually scrap lifting uh, one another. Well, not necessarily, not all of us are scrapbookers. So we are remaking layouts. Um, and so you can see in that picture there, I have a layout by Katrina that um, inspired this layout. So she has... Um, a large heart shape shaker and I am going to make a star shape shaker and then at the bottom the other thing that inspired me about her layout is she has a row of um, embellishments at the bottom left and I thought that would be perfect for Laura Kelly's um, me and my peep stamp set and so that is where I'm going with this layout and so I'm taking her Christmas layout and um, making it a 4th of July layout. So. Katrina has used one of the clear designer toner sheets um, to make the front of her shaker. So I am going to do the same thing um, and I'm going to use uh, one of these. The, so ThermoWeb is now releasing monthly new toner sheets um, and they're, they're special edition, so uh, limited edition. So once they're gone, they are gone. This is one of the first ones uh, that was released back, I wanna say in um, January or February. And I'm going to use that so that I can continue that vertical line that is created by the top of the, the stripes at the top of the page there, or what I call a header when I'm designing. Um, and so I'm going to make sure that I have the correct side of that clear toner sheet. So you want, and then you want to make sure that you're using your colored side of your foil facing out. Um, and because I'm using silver, you, you'll know that if you look at bo both sides of the foil, that you're going to put the shiny silver side out away from the toner sheet and then the dull silver side down. I have warmed up my hot laminator um, and you don't want to just make sure that the light is green. You want to make sure that it is nice and warm and I'm going to go ahead and feed that through in the parchment sandwich. While I am um, using the laminator, I like to just laminate everything all at once. So I also want to back the photo um, with one of the Laura Kelly toner sheets. And so I'm going to do that again with one of the Kelly I'm getting all of the names mixed up, the Laura Kelly um, foils as well. So that toner sheet there with the dots is called Spotty Dots, and I've used the denim blue jeans blue on the Spotty Dots. And then I've used the Laura Kelly Magic Wand Silver because, you know, 4th of July silver um, and Magic Wand uh, on to back that um, stripe there. So I am now using some Gina K double-sided tape. Um, it is perfect to adhere that toner sheet down to the outline of my star. I have cut that with my silhouette. Um, it just makes it super easy. You just double lay or you get a star and then you do the outline of it. Um, but this tape is perfect for adhering that outline down to the clear toner sheet there and so that is going to be the top of my shaker sandwich and then I'm going to have some of the new foil from the jumbo roll it is super awesome um, and then I am going to have the backing to that um, what I really like about the new jumbo roll is that it's easier to cut in half than the Gina K that I was using. Um, so that is super nice and it is super huge. So you get tons of it. It's not too adhesive, but it's perfect for adhering. It's the perfect amount of adhesive and it is much easier to remove the backing of um, this iCraft jumbo roll. Plus, it is going to last me a super long time. And those of you who follow my work know I use a ton of foam um, to pack things up. I like the depth on my pages. So um, I actually wrote the date on the label of this because I want to see how long this is going to last me for my average amount of use. Um, and I'm not there yet. I've only just begun. So um, stay tuned and you can find out. So I want to, before I... Uh, put the foam on and complete the shaker. I want to figure out a little bit more about the layout of this 
layout, um, the, the lay of the land of this layout, because if I decide to overlap the photo over the shaker, I don't want um, to have too much depth there. So I will spare you the search for the perfect sequence um, because it takes quite some time, but there I have chosen the ones that I'm going to use. I thought I might use a little bit of that gold in there, um, but because I have the silver backing, I opt not to use the gold. So this is where I'm going to split the foam in half. It is uh, super easy to do. Um, where I so what I do is I do a cut and then I separate the foam so that this foam isn't stuck to my scissors. Um, so it doesn't look easy, but it is a whole lot easier than splitting um, the other stuff. This way you can make the foam work to the depth of the outline that you've got there. So you can see the outline. I want to say the outline of that star is. Um, slightly more than a quarter inch, so I have a quarter inch. That is an anti-static pad that I have there just so that um, the sequin shaker shakes nicely and you don't get the sequins sticking to the top of the clear toner sheet. I will spare you the agony of watching this because it's a long drawn out process, but basically you lay a strip along the edge um, and then I cut it. And you want to make sure that your seams are nice and tight between um, each piece of foam that you are using. Um, and because I have the angulation of the stars, I am cutting each foam piece on the angle there. And again, to just make sure that I get these tight seams. Now it's just sequins and it's probably not going to see through like if I had a fine glitter, um, but I, I mean all that way and I like to have my <laughs> seams tight. Um, I, I just figure if you're gonna do the job, you wanna do it right, right? And you wanna have the right product to do it. So. That is going to be the um, place where the sequins are. See how easy that stuff is to remove? Sorry, I cut myself off. That is where the sequence is going to go. So I'm now going to use, I have uh, some red sequins of various different sizes as well as uh, I believe three hues of blue. There's a lot of red down that broad side, that panel on the right hand side. And so I wanted to put a little bit more blue than red um, in there. It's also easier to see the different hues of the blues because I have a greater variety of color panel available to me in the blues than I have in the red there. Um, so I'm just going to lay those in there and I'm trying to turn some of the cups so that I like cup side up on my sequence, um, but I, I'm not going to spend the time to make them all perfectly that way. Plus it's hard to see through the stripes, those silver stripes, um, and then I'm just going to plunk that on top and there is that giant Quince shaker. Um, so a very fun interactive element to add to your page. So the other star that I just pulled out there is actually the inside that cut out of the outline of the star. And I wasn't, Christina, uh, Christina, Katrina does not have that on her layout, but I wanted it um, because I felt like I had created two diagonals on my page that I have the diagonal of the star down to the photo. But where you put the people, I felt like it broke that diagonal. And so I needed something bolder at the top right there. And so you can see I pulled out a bunch of different elements that I decided I wasn't going to use. And I was going to use that star instead. Um, Katrina on her layout, she has something that says magic. I think it says magic. Um, and so that was your bold sort of uniting element. I'm just going to use that star instead. So I have off camera, I have spared you the agony of stamping and fussy cutting because if you know scrapbooking, if you know even card making, you know literally I'm stamped it in black and then I've used my fussy cut scissors to fussy cut those people out. Um, so those people are from the Me and My Peep stamp set from Laura Kelly. They are super cute. They're kind of like the people that you used to find on the back of minivans or family cars. Um, so I have my husband, myself, my daughter and um, a house. I was going to do the cats because they were kittens when we had them. Do we have them? I'm not sure that we've gotten them yet. Um, so I didn't do the kittens. Uh, so I'm going to put these on and you can see that I'm kind of scrapping at an angle. So funnily enough, and they are this way in the close-ups too, but we look like we're standing leaning downhill um, or uphill as the case may be. Anyway, we're all on a little bit of an angle. So um, as I was editing this, I was like, mm, that looks kind of funny. So that I have gone in and that's one of the beauties of the Gina K permanent roller 
is it is permanent. Um, however, you can pull it up without pulling your um, paper up with it, especially if you get it uh, before it has been adhered to permanently for too long. So the other thing I'm going to do with these people off camera um, is I'm, I am not a colorer. I don't, I like to do stamping, but I do very basic shading. Um, so I'm just going to use some pit markers and I'm going to just color in the clothing. Super simple and you will see that in the close-ups and it is dead easy to do um, but adds just that extra little touch of color to the page. So I'm going to add in a few other uh, um, extra embellishments just to kind of tie everything in together. I really like that Ellie Studio blue puppy sticker at the top right there because it gives a little bit more blue and just um, unites everything super nicely. Uh, and that, my friends, is going to wrap it up. I am going to journal off camera on that red Ellie Studio card there. There's the shaker. Um, and that is the completed layout right there, my friends. So if you have any questions about the product I've used or how I created the shaker pocket, please don't hesitate to leave them in the box down below. If you have any questions, also leave those in the box down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for stopping in today. I hope you are doing well. Come back again soon. Take care.